A couple of years ago, I was driving myself back to my little hometown in Idaho. My sister was going to be having her first kid, and it was going to be my first niece, so I wanted to be there for her. It was going to be about a 10-hour drive, and I was planning on leaving the following Friday morning since I was off and had the whole day to get there. Unfortunately, I had a maintenance thing come up at my apartment that I had to be there for and, of course, when you're given a time frame of 4 hours, they will show up in those last 30 minutes, then take another 2 hours to complete it. Because of this, I ended up leaving around 6 or 7 that night. I was pissed, but decided I would still head out that night. That way I could get there early, crash for a few hours, and be good to go. So I got my stuff in my car and headed out. Because I had planned this in advance, I already had a couple bottles of water, energy drinks, and snacks ready to go. It was about mid-October, so the weather was great to just have the windows cracked, music blaring, and enjoying the ride. The view was pretty nice too, and there wasn't too much traffic at that time, so I was in a good state of mind. Unfortunately, I started crashing around 1 or 2 a.m. I didn't want to stop because I knew I only had a few hours left, but it was a struggle. I had finished off my energy drinks, rolled the windows down more, hoping the chillier air would keep me awake, but nothing was working. I know how dangerous it can be driving when you're tired and on the highway on top of that, so I decided to stop at a hotel to sleep for the night. I drive a tiny two-door coupe, so it's not exactly comfortable to lean the seat back and sleep, otherwise I would have just done that. I look for the hotel signs and get off the exit for the first one I see. It was a little old looking from the outside. I don't remember the name of it as it wasn't one of the bigger chains either. I just thought as long as the door locked and it wasn't too badly priced, I'll stay. I didn't need anything other than a bed. I got out, grabbed my bag, and headed in. The lobby was a bit eerie. It was dimly lit with a single couch and table area, and the desk had what appeared to be bulletproof glass around it. It also smelled musty, like it hadn't been used in years. Even the carpet looked ancient with its dark red theater looking pattern. As I approached the desk and saw that it was empty, I noticed the door behind the desk that was slightly open and I heard faint talking, like it was coming from a TV. There was no bell or any way to get someone's attention, so I just said, hello, and waited. I heard the talking get quieter and someone coming out of the room. It was a frail older guy wearing what I think was something like long johns in a robe. He wasn't rude or anything, but he also wasn't very polite. But maybe that's because I was there at 2 in the morning and I was interrupting his show. He said good morning, asked how long I was staying, gave me my room key and told me the quiet hours and that no smoking was allowed. I thanked him and walked off down the hallway. I got to my room which made me realize I definitely got what I wanted. It looked just as old in the rooms as it did in the lobby. Same red carpet, mustard yellow curtains and bedding, and the same musty smell. The air just felt still in there, so I quickly turned on the AC to get the air flowing. I sat in my bag and purse down in the chair and went to the bathroom first. While I was in there, something just felt off. It was like that sense you get when you're being watched. I figured it was just me being on edge because I was tired and in a place I wasn't familiar with. So I splashed water on my face, changed into my pajamas, and got into bed. As I was laying there though, that feeling would not go away. 
I tried just falling asleep and ignoring it, but unlike in the car, I now was unable to. That's when I started hearing things. I couldn't really tell at first what it was, but it was really quiet, like it was either a muffled TV or someone whispering. Trying to be reasonable, I was thinking it was just someone with the TV on too loud in the next room, so I tried ignoring it. I think because of the situation though, I started getting annoyed and actually smacked the wall a few times, hoping they'd get the hint. It appeared they did as it got quiet, so I tried to focus on sleeping again. Not long after, I started hearing more noises, but this made me jump as it actually sounded like someone whispering in my room. I quickly turned on the light and looked around and didn't see anything. Now that I'm spooked, I turned on the TV to have some of my own sound to try and help. Unfortunately, the whispering kept up. It wasn't constant, but I could hear it, and it all just sounded mumbled. I could never make out anything. Until the end, when it sounded like it was right behind me, and it said, It hurts. And it made me jump again. I looked behind me, towards the door, and I just saw a dark figure. It looked like a child or maybe a young woman. I quickly turned on the light and it was gone. Now, I know I turned on the air, but it was just the fan, so the air was moving, but it was freezing in that room. I went and looked at the unit thinking maybe I did turn on the AC, but it was still on fan. I turned it off since it had gotten so cold in there and then I turned on all of the lights turned the TV louder, and tried to forget about it all. It wasn't much longer when I started feeling something at the edge of my bed. I again tried to rationalize that it was something like the comforter moving or falling until it started feeling more like someone grabbing my foot. That was it for me. I grabbed my stuff, ran out of that room in my pajamas still, and noticed the room that I thought the TV sounds were coming from was actually just the janitor's closet or supply room. I walked past the front desk, and the room in the back was now dark, but I kept going. I tossed my stuff in my passenger seat as I got in and locked my doors. If I would have known that that was going to happen, I would have just tried to sleep in my car. I couldn't shake the weird feeling just being in the parking lot, so I left. I didn't even care about the money. I didn't feel right trying to explain I wanted a refund because I saw a ghost, so I just ate it. I drove further down to a 24-hour McDonald's and slept in my car for a few hours. I used the restroom to change into clothes, grabbed a large coffee, and headed back out. When I got to my sister's, I told her all about it, and she believed it. She's very into the paranormal, so she enjoyed the story, but me? Not so much. I wanted to look into the history of that hotel, but I couldn't remember the name of it. One of the times I go over there again, I have to try and find it for her. But it will be during the day, and I promise you, I will not be staying there.